I am now here, and uh, it is obviously past, what time is it, according to my computer, uh, 6.34. So we're going to start this session of the Jericho Select Board at 6.34, and as usual, we start with public to be heard. And I, oh, I can read it from the minutes, since I don't have the other copy in front of me. Um, the We've made changes to the board uh, to, to how we run these meetings regarding public comments during the meeting. We can address people can address the select board for up to three minutes during public to be heard. All who wish to speak must be heard once before anyone else is given a separate opportunity to speak. After public comment portion of the meeting, members of the public will be able to speak if the chair determines their input is needed. The board asks that Zoom chat only be used for technical issues issues, not questions or comments. Anyone is welcome to email this select board at any time with comments or questions. So do we have anyone who wishes to speak uh, at this point? I don't see any hands or anything else. So I guess we're okay. If that's the case, we'll move on to the first uh, issue, which is review and consider approval of the resolution for allocation or ARPA funds. And John, you want to go through that? Sure. So the, um, basically this is a uh, formality um, that was requested by our auditor. Actually, Brian, are you out there? I don't see Brian's name Brian on my- Brian Stevens was in by phone. And now there's a B Stevens on here as well. Oh, I thought that might be Brian. Is that yep. not him? They just disappeared. Oh no, oh. They, they turned the yeah, camera. Yeah. Yeah, I don't see him, so. Anyway. Oh, I uh, see it there, there, there is. Yeah, I see a, he's not there though. <laughs> I see his I name though. Like I can go, uh, I can walk through it. So, um, so the, for the remainder of the um, ARPA funds, uh, all that have been allocated are $500,000 of which will be um, committed to the development and construction of the maintenance facility. Um, our auditor uh, requested of Brian that we uh, take a first step by authorizing uh, the ARPA funds to be applied to salaries and benefits in this current fiscal year. And to be able to do that, uh, we needed the uh, authorization via the resolution. Uh, <clears throat> at, at the end of the year, uh, transfer will be made uh, into the buildings and property fund or into a specific reserve fund for the Newtown maintenance facility. Um, and the second part uh, will provide uh, the board will provide authorization uh, for there to be a separate vote near the year end uh, regarding that commitment of maintenance facility funds. Um, yeah, so this is a, I can read the resolution. Uh, do you think that that's would a good idea. be helpful? Yeah, uh, I like, think that's a good idea for the record. I, the other okay. thing is the, the, good, the good thing about it is that because that takes all the money away, um, then the, the, you know, that's the, the account that ARPA funding is closed out. Right. So we've met our obligation to uh, have our ARPA fund committed um, far, far in advance of the end of 2024, which is the good news. Got yep. Neil's coming in. Uh, do so we, we need to read the, do we need to read the whole resolution or can we just enter it into the record as a written document? Uh, that would be up to you, Peter. It all depends on if there's anybody who really needs to, you know, would like to hear it or not. I don't know. I mean, uh, if people aren't that concerned, then we can just have that uh, entered into the record. But I don't see anybody having any comments, so we can just enter the resolution into the um, record. But we do need to you know, at least highlight what it says. Sure. And so. So uh, John can do that then just to, give, uh, if it would be helpful, I can cut to the uh, the resolution part. There's a lot of whereas is. Uh, yes. <laughs> resolution uh, reads like this. Therefore, it be resolved 
The Select Board of the Town of Jericho authorized the following. Uh, section one, the following allocation of ARPA funding to fund government services under the replacement of lost public se sector revenue uh, spending category as follows. Obligate and expend funds in the amount of uh, $800,117.298. What's going on there? That's weird. I yeah. fixed it. Go ahead. Uh, on municipal payroll and related expenses for the period July 1, 2023 to March 30, 2024, for the purpose of municipal workforce retention, uh, passed and adopted by the Select Board of the Town of Jericho on this day, uh, 4th of April, 2024. Um, at some point, uh, Peter, Eric, and Catherine, you'll need to uh, swing in and sign this uh, so that we can um, so that we can record it. Do we have a okay. motion to uh, ex um, authorize? You know, sure. authorize I'll make a motion to uh, approve the resolution for uh, ARPA funds allocation as as read and entered into the record. I'll second that. All those in favor say aye. 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 Both, you know. All righty. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, review and consider approval of the RFP for the new town maintenance facility. And again, it's up to you, John. Yeah. So um, for those of you who've been following the uh, effort to um, the effort to move the initiative on the new town maintenance facility, and the um, successful bond vote that happened uh, on town meeting day. Uh, this is the first step uh, in forward in the next year. Um, the uh, process in the next couple of months, as outlined in the feasibility study, is to uh, put out an RFP to hire a project manager. Uh, the project manager, in turn, uh, will be seeking uh, putting out RFPs for uh, architects, designers, and people who will uh, take next steps in uh, building design and permitting. And um, yeah, so in some very real ways, the, uh, the work of getting the uh, maintenance facility up and underway is gonna, um, is gonna fall to the project manager. And the uh, the RFP that was provided um, is going to be posted in seven days. It'll be on the town website. Uh, it'll appear on uh, VLCT's uh, website for uh, people looking for municipal projects. And uh, the goal will be to have it uh, up and available uh, for for I think it's two. I'll have it up in front of me here. Uh, what's the schedule? Uh, so the schedule is to uh, put it up um, no later than uh, the 25th. We're looking for, I'm sorry, we're going to have it. Um, I think we're going to have to move the schedule ahead. We Yeah, um, that's my question. I was going to ask yeah. about that too. Since, um, you know, a response due by 4-8 obviously doesn't give a whole lot of time since we're just putting it out on 4-4. Yeah, I think the uh, I think the plan was to have it um, have the post phase 4-8 and the response will be uh, 4-22. Um, that'll be when the um, the responses are due and then selection will happen uh, toward the end of the month um, and hopefully by uh, the beginning of May. Um, we'll have a project manager identified. Wait, do you say that you're hoping to get responses back to from the uh, responses to the RFP back by April 22nd? Yeah, correct. It's good. Is, it, is that a reason? Go, it's very fast. That, is that we're going to get enough interest in time for people to to bid on it? Well, we'll have to see, Peter. It's, that's the standard uh, the standard window for. Uh, municipal contracting positions. So I'm, I'm sorry, not not even necessarily positions, but when we put out um, like paving 
uh, paving work and that sort of thing. Uh, it's typically a, a two week window and then kind of see how many we get. And if we um, obviously uh, we don't want to have a single vendor, the goal would be to have uh, multiple bidders. Yep. So, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you. Yeah, that'd be up to that'll be up to you to decide if you want to go back into the pool, depending yep. on who shows up. Yep. So we need a motion to consider approval of this RFP for the maintenance of uh, uh, a project manager. I would make a motion to approve the RFP as presented for the town maintenance facility. I'll second that. All those in favor say aye. 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 Great. And I'll make the uh, I'll make the required date changes. Paul and I will um, we'll figure out exactly what day it's going to be posted. It'll probably won't be until next Wednesday at this point, at least in seven days. But we can get it up. Um, we can get it up on the website and. Uh, off to VLCT immediately. All right. Now we have to go back to our multimodal path alternative. And just a little quick update. There was a, um, a second robust public uh, discussion in February of the proposed alternatives. However, that evening, the select board was not able to make a final decision. But to close out the study, the select board needs to make a choice, which is the purpose of this meeting. We've had quite a few uh, comments. Um, uh, in fact, that was uh, quite a, a long discussion in February. But I will recognize uh, Cody, if he's there, because he asked to, he was, as the chair of the, it's got, it's trade. Cody, it's, what can multi, you hear multi, us? Multi, multi, it's a, you know, whatever the, the, the new <laughs> name for trails committee is, and had wished to speak because uh, they had met and, uh, and and talked about the um, uh, path. Yeah, can, can you hear me all right? We can, yes. Cody. Yes. All right. I can go ahead and uh, thanks for letting me speak. I'll, I'll read this quickly. Uh, but basically, you know, this the, the Bicycle and Pedestrian Committee, in our advisory role to the select board, wanted to share our advice regarding the Stantec proposal. Um, essentially, um, in our mission statement that we're hoping to get approved soon, um, our, our whole goal is to increase connectivity. And alternative three, while it's not a perfect solution and it doesn't you know, do what everyone wanted, it does increase town connectivity and it increases um, mm -hmm connectivity for a significant portion of our community members. So we enthusiastically encourage the adoption of this plan by the select board. We believe that the no build option is not an option because it does not follow the town's goals or our committee's goals of increasing bicycle, pedestrian connectivity within our community. Um, and then uh, the third part is not as helpful for me to say here, but it, it strong, we strongly support the caveats put forward by the Planning Commission in their document. So you need to see their document for that to make sense. But to summarize what they put forward is essentially, you know, um, putting bicycles and pedestrians on raceway where it's gravel is better than them being on Route 15, but it's not a bicycle or pedestrian infrastructure. And, you know, we, we could as a town do a lot better than that. And so that's something we would like the town to keep in mind. But don't hold up building, you know, the the section from the elementary school to Raceway because that is increasing connectivity for all the communities along there and everyone who lives there. So that's that's kind of all we had to say about that. I'm happy to answer any questions if you have any. I just think for the record that it's important that people may not remember which alternative was which. Um, so you are um, sure. You are advocating for alternative three, which is um, extending the sidewalk from Griswold um, yes. to uh, to Packard, and then having the path go down Raceway Road. Um, that is, yeah. I'm, I'm just stating that that is what okay. option two was because I personally had a hard time remembering which was which. So um, that, yeah. other people might might also totally. And then that's the hybrid. Alternative one is the same as the, uh, I believe it's the north side uh, that was uh, in the prior uh, 2017 study. And um, 
Alternative the, one is the south side. Yeah, yeah, south side. Okay, yeah. The north side is the one that they wanted to consider uh, again. Uh, that was brought up in the meeting as well as some of the others. Thank you, Derek. Um, does uh, you, you weighed in as a citizen there, Peter. Do you have any uh, comments this time that you would uh, you know, want to speak about um, before we uh, have to make decisions? No, I mean, I would just say that what makes sense to me is is alternative three. Um, I, but I think we need to deal with raceway in addition. But I think that paving for our sidewalking from Griswold to to the start of raceway makes sense. Me too. Well, actually, it was because you're right. Alternate, um, the the no bill doesn't help anybody. It it did not even you know doesn't even serve the uh, mission of why we had the study done. Um, alternative one imp impacts the most properties. Alternative two has a lot of significant impacts of wetlands, floodplain. It's dark at night. Be kind of scary for parents to actually walk their child because it's so close to the river without, you know, some kind of leash on them or something, it, things like that. I mean, what we have is alternative three, but the interesting thing is um, because of the way it's, it's, we build sidewalks anyway, even though we may say alternative three is our preferred alternative, when you build a section, say from Griswold to Packard, then you, you know, can see uh, at, at that time, because that it takes three to five years to build a sidewalk once you get started anyway, based on, you know, the uh, funding, the preliminary, the preliminary engineering, the right of way uh, permits, all, all those different things that by that time we can see um, if there are uh, other ways to um, connect without having to do like raceway, which is, you know, or let's see what happens to raceway. We don't know. But the it makes sense that the first section, because uh, multiple alternatives went from Griswold to Packard and followed that track. So it, that's an easy, easy look. Uh, and that's my thinking on it is because that would be probably the primary first one you would build anyway. And then we can see how we go from there. Because that yeah, gets you I over totally, to Yeah, I, I totally agree. It, it took me a while to kind of get get to this option um but i like it for a lot of those reasons one it doesn't it doesn't um restrict us from option uh one or option i'll call it minus one of the one that i like the most which is the north side of route 15 even though i understand why it was not re-looked at and i understand some of the, the complications of it um i still just in my head it just despite the fact that I've read the data on both, I just like that one better. But what I like about choosing option three um, is that it it leaves both of those options still open. We could do three and then some other time down the road, we could decide, yeah, we are gonna continue the sidewalk down 15 south side or north side. Um, and what this does is it also just, just extending that that walkway to um, to Packard, you know, people from Packard could walk to the school easily, easier on it. So to me, um, I, I agree with it. I, I do share some concerns about raceway and sending more traffic down there in its current state. There's a couple spots there that I mentioned at the meeting and I, other people mentioned that I'm real, that I am pretty concerned about that one, that one hill. That's just such a blind hill that makes me a little nervous, but I think, um, of these options that it, it's the best options. Um, and then specifically along the, the reason that I didn't like the um, this which option number one which was the south side of fifteen there were a lot of impacted homeowners and the impact seemed really impactful for lack of a better word um, yeah so um, and, and not that this not that raceway doesn't have its own impacts and will require some easements and whatever but I do think it's the best option so I personally am ready to um, ready to move and and to um, Okay. Sorry, the uh, snow's coming off the roof here, and it always sounds like like a train is actually driving through the house. But <laughs> well, I always have to check, even though I know it's not. But it's not. Yeah, it's been pretty wild. There's no question about it. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> um, so we will need a motion to um, uh, signify that alternative three is the selection of the select board. I will move that the select board go with option three of the multimodal path alternatives. What's for the record is the extending the, the walkway from Griswold to Packard, crossing the road, adding signage along raceway towards the other end of raceway. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you very much. We now have another, um, oh, Joe Flynn. Thank you, Select Board. Oh, that was quite nice. <laughs> uh, okay, um, moving right along. Um, we're going to approve liquor licenses. And uh, Jessica Brian, said- Brian does, oh. Brian has his hand up. Had okay. his hand up. I'm sorry, I didn't see it. There he is. Okay, Brian. Well, I did, and then I took it down as quickly as I could, but- uh, <laughs> Just, just two things. Uh, I, I'm sorry I was un unable to sign in timely for the resolution, but as long as everyone has no questions on it, that's great. Um, it, it does that resolution regarding ARPA, it allows us to create the more flexibility and great. The other quick item I would mention is that at some point, and I know you guys just passed the uh, off the uh, your uh, endorsement of option three, but I don't want folks to lose sight of the uh, uh, the old railroad bed, even um, not, and I'm talking about from raceway going towards, uh, going eastward um, towards the, the dog park and, uh, and uh, uh, the um, route 15 there. And the reason I'm mentioning this is that the rail bed still exists there. And I know Dean had mentioned earlier that part of it had washed out. But keep in mind, there was an old jog off the rail bed. There was an old entryway that actually was a, the railroad used the, um, uh, where the Villanova property is to uh, collect gravel. And it was used substantially until it was, take, it was taken out in 1938. The point is that that, um, that rail bed, that portion of the rail bed still exists and could bypass where the previous rail bed had washed out. So don't lose sight of that. I know there's plenty of time and you know this stuff takes 20 years, um, but I, I, I just wanna have that considered in the future, thanks. Thank you, Brian. I mean, you know, that's I, I, that was some of the thinking that we had on, on um, why we chose option three, because uh, a lot of them used uh, Griswold to Packard. And then after that, we can, you know, make decisions of how to, you know, utilize different things. And as for the uh, ARPA, uh, what we had, while well, you weren't there, we, we mentioned that what this does is completely clean up the ARPA funding so that we're well ahead of the December 2024 deadline of using it all up. Correct. Hope and the resolution so, was well represented, Brian. <laughs> That's great. So next on our agenda is um, the liquor up, um, license approvals. And um, Jessica had sent an email that she would not be able to do a, a Zoom and so uh, we have, based on what I took from her notes, is that we needed to add the timelines for outside consumption on some of the properties from last, that were meant, uh, approved uh, two weeks ago. And that we just need to the final approval of Kate's truck, both the first class and outside consumption and then we have um, two new uh, catering licenses to uh, approve. So the catering would be separate from the uh, liquor, the, the uh, permits. So who So what you're saying is we need to, so for Lucy and Howe, did we not do um, the hours last time? And that's why no, started. we did not do the hours. I looked at the minutes, they weren't listed. And that's what she said, they weren't in the minutes. And we needed to okay. do the minutes. 
We need to do the timelines on them. I mean, we approve the permits, but we just need to put when the outside consumption will happen. So can we, do we have the option of forcing them to stay open later for those of us that like to drink later in the evening or is that <laughs> not within our like power as select board? Well, that um, could be a simple history error. <laughs> <laughs> I I think I think that's the hours they got from the uh, the DRB, but uh, you know maybe that's the hours they asked for. I mean because other places first are and open third late. Thursdays they're going to be required to stay open until probably about midnight usually. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Still on this call. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, you can see where um, Kate's food crap. She said the. Um, Basically, it looks like it's the same um, area as in past years. It was just presented differently. Yeah. And yeah. and then we just need to have the hours uh, of operation for uh, outside consumption. And then she has the um, other ones for the t permit, uh, the timelines on the, the other ones, if anybody okay. wants. Okay. So let me take a stab at this and... Uh... So hold, hold on a minute, Eric, before you begin, do we have, um, does this, this document seems to say that we need the dates and hour and dimensions, but do we have those? Yeah, they turned out to be the same as they did in past years because she put in the, um, uh, what was submitted. We went, is this, we asked for, you know, do we need a map? Is this different? And what, what she said from the uh, portal is that it's the same as last year. So Peter, if you look at the bottom of this page, you've got previous year's description. So yep. it's 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. The dimensions are uh, roughly described here, and they also align with the dimensions that were uh, conditioned to last year. Um, yeah. I, as far that's as fine if that's the, I don't, that's not how I read that. I read that as, the applicant, the 3 2024 application needs dates and hours dimensions. And then there's a note down below saying the previous year's description was this. I don't see anywhere that it says we're asking for the same thing. But if that's the understanding that what well, they're asking for is the same description and 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. year round, then then that's what we can move forward with. Well, yeah, she's got uh, above that 23 2024 application. She has the one that's dated information after March 21st. And so that was submitted and 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 through the portal because she had things. So it's um okay. And, and uh the liquor people said uh they're gonna use um if there is no change, they use the same thing from year to year. Okay, take it away, Eric. Okay, so I'll make a motion to approve Lucy and Howe Brewing Company LLC for an outside consumption permit from four four twenty four to 12 one twenty four from the hours of 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. Do you want to do all the, just the hours at once and then we do Kate's track se separately and then what the catering separately? Because it was just the, because we proved the, the of Griffin Riders, Murr Truck and Lucy and how we all proved it, just no hours. I'm sorry, I don't see Mer truck on this. I wrote it down on her thing that she sent out. Hmm. Oh yeah, it's on the top. See, it's uh... Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Scratch that from the record. I'm gonna start over. Um so I make a motion to approve Griffin Riders LLC. No, that's the catering requests. Ugh. I don't know. I have. I guess I. Uh, I guess I, I still don't see Murph truck. I saw that on her thing that she sent out today or whatever. Yeah, it was. I don't think um, I got that. Did I get that? But anyway, what I have is Griffin, For this is all for outside consumption permits because she said they didn't have the hours. So Griffin Riders is Monday through Friday from 11 to 9 and Saturday and Sunday from 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. year round. Lucy and Howe Brew Company outside consumption 4-4 to 12-1, 11 to 8 p.m. 
and Murtrock Corporation, which is um, um, Mountain High Pizza, I believe, uh, oh, yeah. from uh, outside consumption from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Now you get to do Kate's food truck. And that would okay. have to prove the first class license and the outside consumption with the hours. Okay, so uh, I'll make a motion to approve Kate's food truck for both the outside consumption permit and with hours <laughs> with the out with the same hours that were used from last year and the outside permit. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 This new portal no. is uh, not good. Like we've got to get a better. It, 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 it was like I feel like the previous years we've done, done it. It's been so simple. <laughs> I know the portal makes it really difficult. Yeah. But so now, now that and plus she has so plus uh, Jessica has to decipher for us what what's going on in the barn, whether it's a wedding or <laughs> a wake or whatever. Because it's what was always nice to know, but uh, it, for the portal, it's a harder thing to do. But you now have two catering permits to approve. Uh, I will make a motion to approve the catering license request for Griffin Riders on April 13th from noon to 11 uh, at the Mansfield Barn, the Irish Farm Road. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right, now waterfront catering. Now I don't see the waterfront catering. That yeah, I don't, was a, I don't have that, that also, in the paperwork from Paula. Yeah, it, it came in uh, later. It's also waterfront catering, April 19th, 6.30 to 9.30, and it's a fundraiser at the barn. So okay, me. yeah, second. Well, Catherine, well, oh, Catherine, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, you go ahead, Parch Peter. <laughs> Where I'm, I'm just confused. And what are you looking at, Catherine, that, that Eric and I don't have? I saw something that came in from Jessica either yesterday or today. And I tried to print it out. But of course, I couldn't get to the where I can print. So I took it off my iPad, um, her email, and wrote it all down. But okay. it's something that came from the town clerk. Okay, yeah, you must see it. You must be the only one who got that because I didn't get anything from Jess in the last three days. Yeah, I didn't either. I let me look to see when it came in. I could maybe. No, that's, that's okay. I'm oh, okay. Are you sure? I can. You know. I, don't, I don't think you're lying. Yeah, it, was, it was only. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm trying to sneak it. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I read the barn under a pseudonym. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because I'll look it up for you if you want. But oh, that's uh, fine. The, Stacey, Stacey has her hand up. Uh, who has? Stacy's iPhone. Stacy's iPhone. Okay. What is Stacy? Hi there. Hi there, Stacy Jorshik. Um, so considering listening to you all and not having all the information, is there um the possibility of? maybe looking at how this information is disseminated and sent out to folks. Uh, for example, the town of Jericho's um, website, not very transparent, very difficult to navigate through and can't find links. Um, and then, you know, on Front Porch Forum, when there are links posted, they are broken. Peter, I appreciate you sending me the link today for Zoom. But I think if I'm hearing you all talk about your struggling with having information in front of you. Imagine what all of us who are on the outside of that, what we're experiencing. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, the, the real issue, Stacy, is that this is a liquor license portal that has been within the last couple of years. And it's gives it's um, because it's a portal, it has much less information than Majestic would come with a, a, an application and we have it in front of us. But it came through today at 3.30 uh, from the town clerk uh, when she put it out, all the different things that she wanted us to do tonight. Because her, her intent was that it, before the storm uh, turned out to be, you know, as messy as it was, um, she was going to be there and give us the information. 
So that's, but you might find it in your emails then today at uh, 3.30. No? Then how, maybe it just was to me. I, I might have just been you because you, you're the chair. I don't I know. Didn't, I didn't get it. Paul and oh, I John, Paul and me. Copy. Yeah, it was John got it, Paul and in. it, then I got it. Okay. Yeah, John got it, Paula got it, and I got it. So anyway, it is Waterfront Catering, April 19th, 6.30 to 9.30. Uh, it's a, no, it's a college bank. The other one was a fundraiser on April 13th. It's a college banquet at the Mansfield Barn on the 19th. Okay, so we, we moved and seconded, I think. Yeah, we did. So all those in favor, say aye. 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 Oakley, Oakley. Now we're into. If we're select already at select board updates, I think we need to consider doing all these on Zoom. Yeah. So <laughs> seven ten. <laughs> That's exactly ah. right. Yeah. Just make sure, you know, everything is functional. I tell you, uh, but yes, we are now into select board updates. So here we go. John, you want to start? Sure. I guess the um, if I don't want to steal anyone's thunder. Um, Catherine, were you, were you planning on uh, making the grant announcement uh, for the transportation alternatives grant we received for the sidewalk connecting Brown's Trace uh, up to the high school? Although having been part of the original team that got that thing together, I you know I I think <laughs> it's taken so long that you should feel free to <laughs> announce it. <laughs> Have sidewalk grant exhaustion. Yeah, especially well, at this um, one. I mean, there was multiple attempts. I mean, I, I give kudos to uh, Linda on this because we had multiple attempts um, to try to get this last section done, and it just never would get passed. Yeah, and that, again, it's hard hard to know why we um, since Linda uh, began two December's ago. Um, she submitted once, um, it was unsuccessful, and it appears that the second time is the charm. So we um, uh, received uh, $600,000 in federal funding uh, requiring a $150,000 match. And the hope is that we can uh, continue the sidewalk where it ends at the head of Ethan Allen Road across the other side, uh, uh, erect a bridge uh, across the Lee River uh, connecting to the uh, lower field at Mount Mansfield High School and at least get a paved section uh, up to where that lower field is where it intersects with uh, the gravel trail and I guess that'll be the um, that'll be the next phase whether that's ours or whether that's the the high schools to take on yet to be seen. Yeah, our goal was to get it across the Lee River and up to the school property. And, and I do, um, uh, Catherine, I was just going to mention your uh, your ongoing objective has been to uh, try to secure funds that might allow for an improvement of that intersection that could yeah. be part of a larger uh, connectivity goal, both uh, for vehicular traffic and for uh, bike pedestrian traffic in that area, and that's another uh, another an objective for another day. Yes, <laughs> but who knows? Might be able to put them all together someday. Because <laughs> you don't want to build a bridge across the river and then screw it up with a new intersection. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah. Beyond that, I don't have anything. Um, Anything else to contribute by way of updates? Yeah, I I participated. I mean, s several other members of the um, uh, Energy Task Force also, who are members of the Vermont Electric Company, did a small um, webinar with uh, Vermont Electric the other uh, last Thursday, I think it was, and they were talking about their the weather impacts on them and climate change, and. Um, it, it was interesting in that it doesn't seem, you know, that they try to be prepared as best they can, but um, they don't want their co-op, so they don't have the funding that like Green Mountain Power would have, because Green Mountain Power is trying to start 
uh, burying some of its more uh, um, fragile lines or hardening the others. And then uh, um, the, one of the questions that our, our, um, our member yeah, sent out when he sent out the uh, slide deck to other members who hadn't gone, uh, said, you know, he doesn't understand why Vermont Lake is the way it was. And it really is because Green Mountain Power has put all its poles along the road. So it's a lot easier. It's just long, it took longer and lo more pole, uh, more um, uh, cable, uh, pipe, you know, cabling, whatever you want to call them. Um, but it was easier when you're putting in the rural electrification to go through the backwoods. But now it's a real problem given all the power outages, including here again today. So, I mean, that's why in the Jericho Energy Enhanced um, you know, uh, energy plan for the town plan, we suggest that people with VEC actually have in, uh, generators yet. But it was an interesting thing. And then uh, the Jericho Energy Task Force uh, event with Connor Lehiff was well um, um, attended. We had about two dozen people come and he talked about um, Jericho's uh, weather, uh, not in detail like the climatologist would, um, but it, it gives some uh, general ideas of what was going on and what kind of weather we can expect in the going forward in the future. And so that um, he had good news. He, he, he was hopeful at that point, because that was March 28th. He was hopeful for the uh, eclipse. And it looks like we very well may be very hopeful <laughs> for the eclipse. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so... But if people are interested in that, because it was an interesting discussion, because it was an open, uh, he had questions to answer to start with. He had a small presentation. Um, it's available on MMMC TV on their channels. And that's really all I have too. Um, it's, uh, it was a busy week with other kinds of things. The Regional Planning Commission has um, had their compensation study finished we're looking at the UPWP and what's going to be funded for um, the up and coming year, uh, things like that. So I'm good. Anybody else? Do you have anything, Eric or Peter? I don't have any updates myself, no. Peter has a finger up. Nope. Good. All righty. Catherine, I guess I'd be somewhat remiss for at least not acknowledging the coming eclipse. Um, again, if people aren't aware, I really hard to tell uh, how much additional traffic or activity we're going to see here in Jericho. Um, if people have been following the news, um, all the trails on Mount Mansfield uh, on this side are not gonna be accessible given the uh, concerns about uh, conditions and um, people who are unfamiliar with the area uh, trying to travel those routes. So uh, the Mountain Road and Stevensville Road in Underhill uh, will, be, um, will be blocked off uh, except to uh, resident traffic uh, on Monday. And what there'll be, uh, I believe it's gonna be Brian Costello from uh, Chittenden County um, Sheriff uh, Department is gonna be there kind of patrolling back and forth and making sure that uh, people are adhering to the uh, no travel guidance. Huntington is also closing all the roads to Camel's Hunk. Yeah. And they will be also monitored to protect people. In fact, it's given the weather we've had and that it's going to melt and we're gonna have rain, that the roads people will not they were warning folks from out of town that are not familiar with this, that the roads could, we could, we could see a lot of mess on the roads too. People could be stuck, you know, because there's a lot of snow to melt between now and Monday. <laughs> Nashville road will be great though. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> really, really good. <laughs> it was so sad. It was almost getting more dry. <laughs> Mother Nature, she's a cruel mistress. Yeah, she gave us our April Fool's joke late, 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 but there it is. <laughs> it actually was that, uh, because it's so sticky, it was actually absolutely gorgeous, but it's not what you want to see April 4th. 
So next on the agenda then is moving right along. We've got, um, when you go in to sign the um, uh, resolution, be sure and sign the warrants too, but because we're doing this by Zoom, we needed a motion to approve the warrants of 322, 326 and 45. I'll make a motion to approve the warrants of 322, 326, and 45. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 And now we have um, our minutes. And I have, um, it wasn't too much. I mean, just a few little things. Uh, one is very simple on line 203 the word year wasn't quite finished. It was just Y-E and we needed to have A-R there as well. <laughs> but the um, the more interesting one, let's see, is 310. And that is, um, it said, John asked how many hours our loader had on it. Bob said 3,732 as of February 2, 2024. Normal life expectancy would be about 15,000 miles. Now, my question was, is that miles or hours? Because he was talking in hours to start with. And right, some of these the hours. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought, because equipment the is in hours. And that, yeah, that's, that's a pretty, good point. That's that's a significant change. That's line 310. But that's what I had for minutes. There was one thing. Unfortunately, I don't know if I caught the line, but I think. Oh, hang on a minute. It, so it's the part where we were talking about the park and the animal control officer. Oh yes. I, there was I thought there was one use of the four letter acronym that was different from the other two. I'm not sure which is the correct four letter acronym for the park committee. J U P J U P D. Oh yeah. I think it was. I'm looking at it. Line uh, 165 should be J U P D instead of U J P D. Oh, yeah. That's exactly right. Because. So it's so UJPD is correct? It is. Or, yeah, Underhill Jericho Park District. Okay. You're. You I thought it was, I'm pretty sure it's Jericho Underhill Park District. I thought yeah. it was JU. Oh, so they're both J. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. I think it's yes, the JUPD. You were right, Peter. So that so it's wrong in yes. both places. So, so it's correct on line one fifty four, and it's just transposed on uh, one sixty five and one seventy. Yeah. Yeah, that's difficult because we have the you know uh, UJFD <laughs> as you know. Those Underhill people probably call it the UJF the UJPD. That's probably worse. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably that's probably right. Uh, anyway, we need to move the motion to approve the minutes with um, corrections as noted. So moved. And quick update on that ACO meeting, if if I might. The uh, oh, okay. Brad Holden. Uh, we were trying to organize the meeting with uh, Jen Silpy Katz, uh, Olivia, um, Libby Strong, and Chris Tardy. Uh, for this week, and uh, Brad Holden requested that we hold off until after uh, the eclipse madness dies down. So we'll be looking at uh, sometime next week. That makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. All right, let's finish. Uh, we had the motion. We had a second. I will, All those... second. I will second Eric's motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 And I'll make a motion to go into executive session for reasons of personnel and legal because premature disclosure of that information will be detrimental to parties involved and we'll invite John Abbott. I don't believe we have to invite anybody else that I know. Of. You don't need to come, do you, Brian, for anything? <laughs> I don't think so. I'm fine. Have a good evening. Have a Thanks. good evening, all. Thank Thanks you so much here. for coming. Okay. And staying safe in this weather. Yeah, you're right.